Welcome to part number 20 of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're going to do the Schwarzwald Liga A. Or League A, because it's not Liga, like in Gran Turismo 4. But regardless, we're going to use the Volkswagen Scirocco for this. Now this car, comfort soft tires, but I think the performance points on the other cars are less. Let's go ahead and verify that real quick, and if it is, then I guess we can use... Comfort Soft is a way of doing BOP in a way. Yeah, Sport Hard Tires and Typical Opponent List. Oh, I'm on par. Never mind. So we're going to have to buy better compound tires then. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. I thought we were superior over these guys, but I guess not. So there we go. Hard Compound Tires, two events. And let's begin by getting Flynn once again behind the wheel because everyone else is still not feeling that good. So we got a BMW 120 leading the field, Opal Speedster, that car is going to be tough. Let's hope there's no Speedster Turbo, because if there is, then we might be in trouble. Uh, I don't see a Speedster Turbo, so I think we'll be good. Gotta go, alright man. See ya dude, like I said, hit me up on Discord man. Join my Discord server and uh, you know, hit me up on there. See ya, dude. Why is everyone else not feeling good? I don't know. Maybe they're tired or something? Like, their arrows are pointing down. Like, maybe I've put him already in enough races. Maldonado, I'm surprised that his arrow's down because he hasn't really done that much races with us. Not recently, at least. Anyways, here we go. Using the Scirocco, already up to fourth. Yep, and Nauman in the Speedster. No surprise that he took the lead right away. Ah, still in third. We need to get around this BMW fast. I wish there was still online for this game. Me too, dude. I feel like the online servers were taken down way too quickly. Like, they only got taken down, like, maybe, what, six months? Or, like, maybe less after GT6 came out. Like, around 2014 is when the online service... A weird-looking BMW. Yeah, that's the 120. Not the nicest looking model, but it's alright. <laughs> I think there's a whole championship with it in GT4, if I remember correctly. Like a one make series. Nomin is starting to calm down. So that'll buy us some time, I think, to catch up. We can't let Flynn get hot in a front wheel drive car because I don't want him to understeer all over the place. Yeah, he's really attacking the curves now. Man, the Scirocco is such a nice car. That's a really, really nice car. Maybe a pass into the chicane, possibly? Nicely done, Flynn! A lot of wheel hop. Oh my god. All right. Look at you, Mr. Aggressive. Dude, Nauman is like having none of it. He's really... Tr they shouldn't cut down servers in all these games, less customers. True. Very true. I mean, the problem was that everybody moved on to PS4 when GT6 came out. Because that's when the PS4 came out, you know, around that time. And a lot of people were playing this. GT6's sales weren't as high as GT5's. A lot of people were playing GT5 online. 
you know, they should have allowed maybe like a transfer system of some sort. Maybe transfer your cars from 5 to 6. Maybe to have customers go to 6. But not that many people wanted to start over, you know, because a lot of people built a huge arsenal in 5. And don't forget, around GT5's release, you had like the car market on eBay, on GC Planet. You had the car market be really high, you know what I mean? Like, everyone was doing it. Like, everyone was trading everywhere. So imagine how many people poured money into getting the Chrome Line car, or not the Chrome Line cars, some of like the $20 million cars like the XJ13 or the Ferrari 330p4. I also agree with the online, you, sh you, you used to be able to buy a Formula Gran Turismo at the online dealership, yeah dude, and now because it's offline, now because it's an offline game, you literally have to find it in the UCD, which is dumb. Although if I remember correctly, I think there's a way to win it. And I'll say it right now. I remember now. Yes, I remember there's a way to win it. So I remember back when this game came out and I did B-Spec with all the, you know, with the Red Bull for every single race because I didn't care at the time. This was like 2010. I remember if you beat every single endurance race, you get a level 24 uh, coupon. Now there's a 33% chance of winning the FGT because there's two Ferrari Formula 1 cars that you could win. And if you want a Ferrari Formula 1 car, you're screwed because it's useless in this game. But back then, you know, there was the online uh, seasonal events that had the Ferrari F1 car, you know, as a as an entry. So, it served a purpose back then. doesn't really serve a purpose now apart from just saying you have a Ferrari F1 car in your garage. Have I seen Rhino GT4 do the Top Gear Elise Challenge? Um, no, I haven't. To be honest, I don't really remember the Top Gear Challenge except for the Volkswagen Samba bus. That's the only one that I remember. And obviously when I do A-Spec, we will be doing the Top Gear Challenge. You know, the one thing I'm looking forward to the most is like, how long is the Red Bull uh, Sebastian Vettel Challenge going to take me in this game? Because it's brutal here in GT5. GT6 is really easy, but GT5, it's extremely, extremely difficult. Well, Nauman and Flynn are having a pretty good battle for the lead. Yeah, the Ferrari F1 car is shit. Serves no purpose, like I mentioned earlier. But yeah, um, you know, definitely that's something that, you know, would have been useful online, but not anymore. So I'm really hoping. So my plan basically is this. I'm hoping that I can win an FGT car from the level 24 coupon. Because, for those who haven't played GT5, including Marvin the Gamer, every time you complete a beginner series, interme or um, amateur, expert, you get a coupon for a brand new car for a specific level. So let's say, like, I don't remember what the levels are, and if anybody knows, please don't spoil, because I do not remember. I only remember the level 24. But let's say you beat Beginner League. You get, like, a level 1 coupon, let's just say, and that could be, like, a Celica, that could be an RX-7 FC, that could be an MX-5. It's just completely random, but level 24, there's only three level 24 cars, aka the FGT and the two Ferrari Formula 1 cars. So if I get the FGT car from the coupon, that'd be awesome, but if I don't, then I have to do a load of money grinding and day grinding in order to find the damn car in the dealership. And I could end up with like $20 million, like the maximum amount in this game and buy it because I have to just move so many days in the used car dealership to find the damn thing because it's so rare. And that is why Gran Turismo 5 is my least favorite in the entire series. The amount of grinding that you have to do for the leveling system and just to find cars to complete the game, it's BS. Not saying that I hate this game, but it's really tedious and it should have been looked over, you know? And that's my rant. That's over. <laughs> the Ferrari F1 was from GTPSP. They just transferred it over. Actually, no. Um, there is a premium model for it. But obviously, when you transfer the PSP models over to GT5, they're all standard cars. So even the cars that are premium, like the um, like the Renault Clio or the BMW Z4, 
or the Mazda 787B, you're going to get a standard model imported into GT5's arcade mode. Which, by the way, that was kind of a... I don't know if it was a shady move or false advertising or whatever, but I remember back in the day, everyone, like, every journal... Um, it wasn't Sony. I don't think it was Sony. I think Sony just said, you can transfer your cars in the, into GT5. But I think it was IGN and them that would say, you know, oh, if you play GT PSP, you can transfer all your cars into career mode, which wasn't the case. I remember ha having a friend who was really, really mad at that because he collected every single car in GT PSP in high school. And when he got GT5 in like 2012, because, you know, he got his PS3 really late, he was pissed because he, he said he remembers IGN specifically saying that. And I wouldn't be surprised because IGN is garbage. Dude, once Flynn just started to take the lead, dude, he's pretty much gone. Nauman is like, I give up. Screw this. Look at the gap between the speedster and the rest of the field. Shows you how good this car is. So let's increase his pace a little bit more. Have him maintain the gap. running a solid race so far although I think I thought multiple cars were chosen to be remodeled to be premium and the F1 was one of them it was it was however if you transfer the car from GCPSP into arcade mode it's a standard model you can still buy the premium model in the dealership but in arcade mode the transfer slot or whatever it becomes standard my god, I used to hate that shit out of the Speedster in older games would always give trouble. Yes. The Opal Speedster, I love this car so much. And yeah, dude, that Opal Speedster was just really crazy. Hoping to get a Voxel VX220 in my A-Spec playthrough because British Lightweight Championship and yeah, that car is so cool. It's just basically the British counterpart of the Opal Speedster. Well, two laps to go. Ooh, fight for the final spot on the podium. Basically the best of the rest. Is that a BMW 2002? Awesome. IGN review of Gran Turismo 5 was a negative 1,000 out of 10. Yeah, dude, IGN is really bad at reviewing games, except for Call of Duty. That's like the only game they give, like, a high rating every single time. You know, the interesting thing is that Gran Turismo 4 are GTPSP models that are premium in 5, so... Okay. Before I confuse myself, I'll just say a model that was converted to premium in 5. Um... The Audi TT uh, 3.2 2003. That's a premium model in this game. Now, obviously, it was in GT4, and it's in GT feet, is in GT PSP as a standard model. The interesting thing about that is that when you transfer it to arcade mode, it's, it's standard, right? In arcade mode. But, back when the online car dealership was a thing, you could actually find cars like that, that are standard as well. So you could find the standard model in the online car dealership. So you would have a premium and a standard model version in your garage if you had the online capability back then, which was really interesting. I know I probably just confused everyone watching right now, but yeah, it's like the best way I could explain it. <laughs> like IGN was the only level 5 at the time they were reviewing it. Yeah, d really? Dude, I didn't even see their review. I read their article about it. I didn't watch the video. 
Dude, IGN is super notorious for playing games for only like an hour and then reviewing it. And hey, this is the same company that stole a freaking review from a YouTuber and posted it as their own. So, what what more do you expect from them, to be honest? They're trash. Anyway, speaking of trash, let's go ahead and look at 12th place. Dude, you're in a VW Bora, aka Jetta, here in the States. How are you this slow? Getting beat by a Vectra! It's the same game over and over and over again as Call of Duty and the new Super Mario series. I like the new Super Mario series. Well, if you're talking about like new Super Mario Bros on like the DS and 3DS, I mean, they're alright. But like, Super Mario Odyssey, those games, they're good. Dude, that Spora is so slow. Holy crap, that's a huge gap already. Wow, 14 seconds. We don't even need to watch Flynn anymore. Flynn is pretty much on his own. Two minutes and 50 seconds. Wow, 15 second differences. New Super Mario Bros. 2 was garbage. The Bora is so ugly. I like the Bora. Or Jetta. I like it in, in silver. Oh, I just saw New Super Bros. 2. <laughs> yeah, New Super Mario Bros. 2. I haven't played that one. I only played the first New Super Mario Bros. That's because one of my cousins, she had a Nintendo DS. And that's the only game she had. And I used to go to her house a lot. And this was before they had internet. And, like, video game consoles. And so she'd go to, like, she'd go to school and stuff. And I would just play that all day because that's the only thing that I could do before she came home. No! Oh my god, stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I almost quit the race. I mean, New Super Mario Bros. 2 is my second favorite Mario. Oh, really? Damn. One person think he thinks it's garbage, one person thinks it's good. Interesting. And across the line, victory for Flynn. Yeah, pretty much a 15 second win. Absolutely dominating this field. And nice, we're level 19. Flynn is now level 14. What would you do if I quitted the race? Hmm. I'd probably throw my controller Wings of Redemption style. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, nah, I I'd be pissed. If I did quit the race, I would have been like, I'm the biggest idiot on the planet. Oh no, not Tokyo. Damn, these guys are still not feeling good. Flynn is feeling super confident now. It's like, okay. So we have a Volkswagen Bora, we have a Golf R32. Wow, okay. Okay, there's a Speedster starting ninth. I'm surprised the Speedster Turbo hasn't appeared yet. Well, there's only two races in this championship, so there's pretty much no other chance for it to appear unless we quit and then come back to the race, but whatever. All right, here we go. If I quit the race at the end of the 24 hours, I would shoot myself. Damn, that's a bit extreme, bro. <laughs> Holy crap, the speedster. Oh, Gallagher's coming in hot. Come on, get around these cars ASAP, Flynn, come on. Flynn, you idiot. Man, I just feel like it's a copy of the past ones, but worse. I mean, I can't say. I haven't played New Super Mario Bros. 2. 
Wasn't there one for the Wii? I heard that one's really good. I don't know, my favorite Super Mario Bros. is still Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. For me, that's the best one. I know everyone's like, Mario 3, Mario 3 is the best one, but for me personally, it's Super Mario World. I just enjoy that one so much more, I don't know why. That R32 is going to be pretty tough to fight as well. That is if Oak Gallagher doesn't get around him. Nope, he's going to get through him. Flynn is starting to cool down. Need him to pick up the pace. Can't really afford him to start slowing down. I can tell why people hate it, but have you played it, CK? Oh, what are you asking him? Uh... Yeah, maybe he can get an answer to you. I think he has. I mean, if he, he's really into Pac-Man and like platformers and racing games. Flynn, you dumbass, get around him already, please. Well, I guess he's trying to pass him. Although, I don't know why you'd put yourself in the wall trying to get somebody. Is O'Gallagher calming down? Yes, he is. Okay, we're going to same speed. Okay, so he can afford to be more aggressive at this track. More runoff than Nurburgring. I mean, it's a street course, so... Wide walls. Not really any runoff or grass. New Super Mario Bros. 2? Yeah, I bought it like three years ago. It was so damn boring after having fun with the Wii version. Yeah, exactly. I hear that the Wii version is really good. I know I said that already, but I actually have not played that one. Only I, I actually played and beat the first New Super Mario Bros. on the DS. And I can tell you that was a good game. Bump and run, Flynn? Okay, sorry for calling you a dumbass. No, you're still a dumbass, Flynn. <laughs> Have I played Mario Kart? Um, yes. My favorite one is between Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 64. I just really like 8. I think 8's really, really good. New, um, not new. Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. I did play it. I like it. Um, I mean, it's the first one in the series. I hear everyone talking about Mario Kart DS is the best one. Mario Kart Wii is good too. Matt KC on YouTube actually does a lot of multiplayer. Mine's Wii. Nice. Like I was going to say, Matt KC does a lot of um, streams of Mario Kart Wii on Twitch and YouTube, and he always has subscribers play with him, which I haven't had a chance yet because he uses Dolphin, and I don't have a CD for it, nor do I have an ISO. But with Nintendo cracking down on, like, not cracking down, but, like, starting to sue emulation websites, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to find a copy. Um, what else? Double Dash on GameCube? I played it back then. I liked it. And that's really it. Mario Kart 7? I played it for like two days. Because I got it on my last two days of my 3DS's lifespan. So I really can't ha say if it's that good or bad because I haven't really played all of it. I play all four, and the first one is good. Wii is awesome. Two is very addicting, and U is also awesome. Yeah, dude, Mario Kart 8 is really good. The deluxe version, too. Like, playing on the Switch on the go is so awesome, like, inconvenient. Well, once again, just like Nurburgring, after Flynn took the lead, he's starting to just pull away. Gallagher is starting to give up.
All right, so Flynn just doing who's in last Meyer. Oh, look at that. The VW Bora once again. <laughs> what a surprise. Whitehead in the Golf Mark 1 10th SLR McLaren or SLR McLaren SLK 230 compressor 9th regular Golf in 8th. Oh, you're talking about the new Super Mario Bro. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I misread your comment, as I usually do. Um, let's see here. First one's good. Wii is awesome. Two is very addicting. And oh, oh, you're having your debate with CK. Yeah, I, I see now. Sorry, I, I, I thought it was Barney's comment. Sorry, Zero Beat. Let's see here. First one is good. Wii is good. Never played two. Never played you. Ooh, pass by the Lupo? Maybe? Let's go back to third. Is the fight over? It looks like it. That poor Bora. Just being the sorriest car in the entire field. Giving all the Jetta drivers and Bora drivers around the world a bad name. Now this is the battle to look out for. We gotta go back to Flynn every once in a while and tell him to pace up. But... Ooh, nice fight for 5th I see. VW Polo versus a 2002 versus an S3. Golf. And 120D. That's okay, and golf. All right. You're still sad that the Wii U is dead. Well, n blame Nintendo for that, dude. <laughs> Every time you see a Volkswagen Golf, put a golf club on it. Come on, 2002, get the spot. Yes. I love this course so much. But yeah, it's Nintendo's fault that the Wii U died. Like, they're the ones that thought they could live the glory days with the Wii. Like, here's the problem. Nintendo marketed the Wii towards a non-gaming audience because of the motion controls and so they were able to win the console war of that generation because they sold a bunch of consoles to non-gamers and what did everybody play Wii Sports because it came with it did anybody buy any other games shovelware maybe you know maybe they bought like Ninja Brand Man or whatever it was called or like the the crappy Wii music or the crappy freaking like Hannah Montana games and stuff that's really it well obviously first party titles as well but not as much as like the shovelware stuff or I could be wrong on that but the point is is that a lot of non gamers so like your grandmas your grandpas your aunts the old lady down the street they're the ones who bought the Wii and so when the Wii U came out Everyone thought that it was just a tablet add-on. I thought it was a Wii with a tablet, you know? So Nintendo tried to go the route of, like, the gimmick. Or, not the gimmick, because, yeah, it's a gimmick, I guess. So is the Switch, in a way, but it's not as bad as the Wii U was in terms of marketing, because Nintendo literally tried to live off of the glory days of the Wii, and it ended up biting them hard because, what, 70 million sales? Or, could be wrong on that number, versus, like, what, 10 million? 15 million around there? That's a huge difference. I'm just going off of these numbers from like what I remember reading last time I looked this stuff up. So I could be wrong on those numbers, so don't preach this as gospel, but the point is is that the Nintendo Wii U was Nintendo's fault that it died. And it was a good system. Unfortunately, it just wasn't good enough to buy for one single game. I only bought mines for Super Smash Brothers, and I do not regret it. Although I did sell my Wii U because eventually Simu is working fine with Smash Brothers now, so I ended up getting rid of my Wii U because I don't even care about the other games on it. Now I will be getting a Switch for Ultimate. I will be getting a Switch for Ultimate, but there are other games that I see that I want, like Super Mario, o uh, Super Mario Odyssey. I was gonna say Galaxy. 
the upper right. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really take a rocket scientist to know that Nintendo screwed up with their marketing. Like, you can't go and sell another, you know, another console with the name Wii when you've already promoted the Wii as, like, um, you know, like a motion, a motion control console and then change it up completely. And it's sad, because the Wii U was an awesome system. So you know what, let's just hope that the Switch... Well, it's not going to be a failure, because I think the Switch is already outselling the Wii U. I think. Like, I think it's already doing much better. Oh, dude. I want to stream Smash Ultimate. And on top of that, like, you know what, dude? Here's the thing. I thought about streaming Smash, but... I'm not the best player at it, and it's just like, I don't want to stream if, if I'm not zero, you know, like, I, I'm not that good. So it's just like, eh. At the same time, it's just for fun. But I mean, there is a chance I might get the game early, before release date, because this video game store, you know, around uh, the city of LA, around LA, there's this video game store called Game Zone. And usually they get their games between one day early and a week early from their distributor. But the difference is that because they're not a big corporation like GameStop is, they don't have a contract with distributors. So technically they can sell it already, you know, when, it, when they get it on their hands. But technically under law, they can't sell it on the receipt as like Smash Brothers, for example. So they have to just change the name and then, you know, that's what I understand. Something like that. Other small video game stores do it too, but yeah, I pre-ordered my, I pre-ordered my Smash Brothers copy with uh, Mom and Pop Shop, so hopefully they get it early. Hopefully, we'll see. Hey, Mad Max, how's it going? And we win. Sweet. All right. Flynn is now level 15. Just like Kobayashi is. Oh, damn it. I forgot to save the replay. It doesn't even matter. These races have been so dominant with this car that we could literally just make a thumbnail with the Nürburgring or Tokyo, honestly. Because we nothing interesting has happened in these two races. We just literally destroyed the whole field here. All right, price car is okay. Top Gear Advanced. Nice Opal Speedster. Okay. I think we could use this for the European Championship in the extreme events or something else. We'll see. There it is, in red, or Rabia R Rot. <laughs> I just completely butchered the name. Splatoon, Mario Kart 8, Pikmin 3, Super Smash Bros., The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. They used to, I used to go to Game Zone. I remember when I was much younger, doing the most retarded move there, trading in PS2 games for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, that's a store in L... Are you from LA? Because that's a store in Los Angeles, bro. Or Gardena, California, as, you know, since it's in that suburb. Anyways, Opal Speedster, there it is. So, next time on Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I, I never know what we're going to do next, because I'm always unorganized. Ooh, I know. Polyphony Digital Cup. We're doing that championship next. 